If your seed collection looks like this, stick around. I'm gonna go over eight different ways to organize your seeds, what worked and what didn't for me, and my current cheap and easy setup. And make sure you stick around to the end and I'll show you my favorite seeds that I reorder every year. Hi guys, I'm April from ReSprout. Like and subscribe for more garden tips and tutorials from my suburban front yard garden where I help you garden like a boss. There's a lot of seed storage systems out there. If you've been on Pinterest, it can be a little overwhelming. When I first started out, I literally threw seed packets in my shed. Like seriously, right next to the motor oil. <laughs> I guess if you only have three seed packets you bought at the dollar store, it's not a big deal, but it didn't take long to lose and damage the packets and spill the seeds everywhere. I think at some point I graduated to a drawer in my shed, but the problem with that is that the packets just never close right once they're open. In drawers, the seeds lay flat, so every time I open the drawer and rifle through it, they just start crapping seeds everywhere. So then I had this idea that I was going to go all Martha Stewart and convert to mason jars. They're waterproof and airproof, so I was moving in the right direction, not to mention I thought it would look really cool. I love mason jars and use them a lot in my kitchen to store stuff. But the problem here is that even the smallest mason jar, the four ouncer, is way too big for a standard seed packet. It just took up way too much space. It was ridiculous. So I started looking around for something smaller and I came across these hardware organizers and I had a couple different sizes. The problem with these is that I had to take the seeds out of the packet, meaning I was going to lose all the information on the packet. Also, the little dividers are not 100% flush, so seeds can migrate from one area to the other. I tipped this thing over one time and all the seeds got mixed up and that was the end of that. So my next idea was a binder with sheet protectors or even a four x six photo pages would work well too. I like the idea of sorting the pages and having the packet info clearly visible. I even labeled some of the protector pages so that I knew where the packets went after I took them out. I also liked that it was fairly waterproof and when you close it, it's pretty dark in there. So those are two components of a good seed storage system. Now make sure if you go with this method to get the sheet protectors that load from the binder side, not from the top, or else you'll be one drop away from all your packets flying out of the binder. The binder method worked for a little bit until I started buying more seeds in bulk. This is not an issue a beginning gardener will probably have, but once I got my favorite varieties, built quite a number of big beds, and I started planting multiple successions of things in the same year, it just made sense to bulk up at the beginning of the year to save money. The problem with this is that when you buy a lot of seeds, they come in these giant packs, plastic jars even, and those just do not play well with sheet protectors. The bean packets are especially enormous. I was also starting to save seeds, which was also producing a large bulk. Which brings me to these photo organizing boxes. These four x six photo organizers are everywhere on Instagram. People seem to love these for seed organizing for some reason. Usually you see these in clear, but if you do go with this method, get the black box like this one, which will keep out the light. These photo organizers are very similar to the binders in that if you have a lot of standard seed packets with a standard amount of seeds in them, this might work for you. I do think these could work a little better than the binder since you don't have to worry about the packets falling out. But there's no way these giant packets of beans, the larger bulk packets, or my peanut packets are going to fit in these tiny boxes. No way. So this is just not a system that can grow with you. Also, while the idea of having a seed briefcase is just adorable as hell, this runs the risk of your seed packets lying on their sides and flat, which again goes back to crapping seeds all over the place. Just a regular open box is probably one of the most common storage methods, and this was my preferred version for a long time. I actually used a repurposed plastic CD box and use some empty CD cases as dividers to keep everything from falling over. What was great about this method was that all the seed packets stayed upright, no seed crapping, and it was adjustable so I could put the giant packs as well as the small jars in there. I also got to organize them in the order I wanted, like the binder system, and I got to keep the packets with all the grow info. My box and I were doing good until two things happened. One. I just could not stop buying seeds, so I started a pile of seed packets next to my box. 
and two, we got mice. And I had no idea how much mice liked green bean seeds and peanut seeds until all I found was peanut shells, empty packets, and mice poop. So that is when I got serious about my seed storage. This is the system I'm using right now. Basically, a box on crack. I got a cheap plastic box from the local drugstore. Number one important item for me, it had a locking lid, making it mouse proof to all but the most insane meathead rats. If you can get an opaque box, your seeds will be in the dark, which will help increase storage life. This box is translucent, which is not the best, but the packets are opaque and I store it in the closet, so the light isn't an issue in my situation. The clear lid actually came in handy for me because I used it to tape a planting reference guide to. This includes the distance the seeds need to be planted from each other, how deep, the germination temperature, when to start and transplant, plus other bits of info that you always need when you're seeding. This is seriously one of the most used pieces of paperwork I have for my garden. If you want your own copy, stop over at my website, resprout.com, and you can download a copy for free that you can print out at home. This box is wide enough to store two columns of packets, making it double the size of my old box. Everything is upright, so the seeds don't fall out and you can read the packets. It's also tall enough to take the larger seed packets and any jars I might need to throw in there. And it's the perfect size to throw a catalog or a garden journal on top. I cut up some old cardboard boxes to make the center divider and the category dividers. Y'all, and don't pretend you don't have a whole pile of boxes by your front door. Now, as far as how I order them, I've changed a bit over the years. It used to be completely alphabetical by crop name, but I found that I tend to seed and search for things in looser categories. So a good example of this is the greens category. Sometimes I'm not looking for a particular lettuce or kale or chard or arugula. I just need to plant greens, especially if I'm looking for baby greens. So I just come to this category and browse. One thing I do separate is green seeds that are older than three years. With these, I plant them differently. I broadcast them and over sow them since I know I might have a germination issue. I also have categories for alliums, which include leeks and onions right now, tomatoes, which I always have a ton of, peppers, and herbs. Almost the entire right side here is those huge bean packages I showed you guys earlier, plus a couple little ones. And then I have a small area right up front sorted alphabetically for all the seeds that don't fall into any of the previous categories. Although this box is an airtight, it is plastic, which makes it more impervious to water than a cardboard box, which might get damp over time. While seeds don't have to be stored in an airtight container, it does increase their life. So if you're looking for long-term storage, you might want to try individually storing seeds in zipper storage bags or using a five gallon bucket. Me, I usually use up all my seeds within one to two years, so it's not an issue for me. For all my prepper friends out there, let us know what you're using for your long-term seed stores. We'd love to hear about it. To decrease the humidity, I make sure to store it outside of the humid areas of my house, which for me is my kitchen and basement. And if I come across any of these desiccant packets, I throw these in there too. A lot of times you'll see these when you purchase new vitamin bottles, shoes, or purses. Another thing I always keep in my seed box is these empty seed packs and a pen. These are self-stick and can be resealed, which honestly, every commercial pack should be made with. It should be like illegal people not to have packets that can close. Can, can we all like agree to this? I use these to repackage any seeds whose packet I completely destroyed while opening it or to save my own seeds. These are super cheap and you can get them on Amazon. I'll leave a link in the description below. So while we're in the seed box, let me show you guys the seeds that I always have on hand, the seeds that I always reorder every year, basically my favorites. Napoli carrots, available from a lot of different seed companies, are a favorite of four season farmer Elliot Coleman. They're always reliable, never have pest problems, and are usually fat and straight. Market more cucumbers from high mowing seeds. Before planting these, I had a lot of pest and disease problems with cucumbers. These guys are resistant to basically everything. Cucumber mosaic virus, powdery mildew, and scab, and they're super productive. I remember two years ago, I harvested 20 cucumbers in one day. Giant winter spinach, 
also from high mowing seeds. If you guys have seen my spinach harvesting video, you know how pest free and prolific these spinach seeds are. I always order a big pack of these. Rutgers Obsession DMR Basil from High Mowing Seeds. I love this primarily because it is extremely resistant to downy mildew, which are those brown spots. Older basil always seems to get right at the end of the season. Because I plant this variety, I can usually keep my basil plants until the first frost. I've tried a lot, and I mean a lot, of tomatoes over the years. Of all the ones I've tried, my favorites, all from High Mowing Seeds, are the Sunrise Bumble Cherry Tomato the damsel slicing tomato, and the plum perfect F1 paste tomato. All three of these almost always blow away the other varieties exponentially in pounds harvested, disease resistance, and flavor. So what about you guys? Tell us your favorite varieties, your favorite storage methods. Let us all know so that we can all have more excuses to buy more stuff for our gardens. I hope this video helped you out. Remember to sign up for my email newsletter for more garden resources and keep gardening like a boss and I'll see you guys soon.